dark fantasy. I am the man who came back. Break it up, break it up. This way, officer, he's in here. All right, miss. Casey. Yes, Captain. Now, you stay right there in that doorway and don't let nobody in or out. Right, Captain. All right, now. All right, you heard him. Oh, but we had nothing to do with this. Okay, sister. If you didn't, you ain't got nothing to be scared of. Hey, you. Where do you think you're going? I thought I might get a little air, if you don't mind. Well, I do mind. Now, back in the house with you. What's the big idea of you wearing that mask? As you might have observed, my friend, this is a masquerade party. Oh, is it now? Well, according to Emily Post, it's masks off at midnight. And we got this call to come out here just as the clock in Washington Circle was striking the hour. The call was placed by a most hysterical woman. And there is nothing you can do for the man in there, I assure you. Stop changing the subject. What I want to know is... Why ain't you unmasked, like the others? I prefer, sir, to wear my mask. Take it off, Don Juan. I want to look at your mug. It might be better, my friend, if you didn't see my mug. Now look here, Zorro. Perhaps while we are waiting, I might tell you a story. Yeah? What is this? Bedtime at Grandma's? The only story I'm interested in is what happened here tonight. Exactly. Eh? I said exactly. Perhaps I can tell you the story. All right, then, my fine, mysterious friend. Give. Well, you see, it's quite a long story. It really all began three... Yes, at least three years ago. I remember that evening quite well. I let myself into Granger's apartment. It was a golden key I used. A bright golden key. And there was no one there when I arrived. So I closed the door and waited. Grange, imagine seeing me here. Huh? Blake, oh, I say, you startled me. Did I now? I dare say, had I been someone else, you wouldn't have been at all startled. Uh, incidentally, old man, how did you get in here? I suppose it would be quite facetious of me to say that I came in the same way you did. Oh, I say, a, a new piano. Do you mind? Uh, uh, no, not at all. Go right ahead, help yourself. Uh, have a drink? No, thanks. You'd better have one, though. Hmm? Yes. Uh, I say, Blake, what's that you're playing? You've heard it before, Grange. Have I? I don't recall. You have a short memory. I usually remember pretty well. Well, when you choose to, you do, yes. And what do you mean by that? My wife has played that tune for you every night this week and last and the week before that. You see, I happen to know. Oh. I see. Well, I'm glad you haven't the audacity to deny it. No. No, I don't deny it. Your wife has been here. Often. As often as she possibly could. But I assure you, she came of her own desire. And as a result of your oily persuasion... I might agree, Blake, that she is easily persuaded. And, of course, my uh, curiosity prompts me to ask how you finally learned the truth. I accidentally found the key to your apartment here. It was in Sylvia's purse. A golden key. With your initials engraved on one side, hers on the other. Why, I thought that a rather handsome touch. Don't you agree? I've brought the key back to you. 
How gallant of you, old fellow. I'm serious. Sylvia will never come here again. Are you positive of that? Quite. But I shall ask her not to. You seem to believe she'll obey you. She will. And I ask you now, Grange, as a gentleman, kindly refrain from inviting her here again. In uh, other words, hands off. Is that it? Uh, I'm glad I make myself quite plain. Why, you fool. You dull, stupid fool. What right have you to demand anything of Sylvia? You think for a moment, night after night, twiddling her thumbs while you're away from home? I admit I've been busy this past year, but another six months... Ah, you've no one to blame for Sylvia's being here but yourself. Here she's found what you denied her, Blake. I doubt very much if she'll give it up. Why, you swine, if you think for a moment... Oh. I forgot you carried a gun. But if you'd care to put it away... (laughs) Skip the heroics, Blake. You know, I think I've suddenly thought of a solution to all this. The only solution is for you to leave Sylvia alone. Oh, no. No, you're quite mistaken. This is the solution. Here in my hand. Indeed, I rather like the idea. Besides, with you out of the way, Sylvia need have no more qualms. Why, you low yellow rat. That's it, Blake. Come closer. Threaten me. Make me do it. Make me do it, Blake. You think killing me is a way out, Grange. You're very badly mistaken. It's the only way out. If you kill me, Grange, I'll come back and avenge myself. One shot and that'd be all. I can prove self-defense. Sylvia will help. She'll swear you came here and tried to kill me. I'll come back, Grange. Just one shot directly between the eyes. I'll haunt you, Grange, because by God in heaven, I'll come back. It's a perfect scheme, yes. I like I'll it. I'll pierce the veil, Grange, because <laughs> I'll come back if I have to fight all the demons of hell to do it. I'll prepare, Blake. This is a chance of a lifetime. It's the way out. Yes, it's the way out. Grange! <laughs> It is the judgment of this court that the defendant, Keith Grange, did shoot and kill the deceased, Philip Blake, on the night of April 16th, and that in so doing, he acted in a line of self-defense. The court therefore decrees that Keith Grange shall not be held to account for this unfortunate incident. I suppose there's nothing to worry about now. Not the slightest thing. I told you from the very beginning, Sylvia, that I acted rightly in doing what I did. I still can't resign myself to it. But you must. It's all over. Philip is dead. Now we can be together as much as we please. Keith, suppose you and I should have a misunderstanding. Suppose I should become angry sometime. So angry I, I might tell the truth to the authorities. Uh, That, my dear, would be most unfortunate. But it's a possibility, and by no means should we overlook possibilities. Uh, So allow me to remind you, Sylvia, my dear girl, that your hiding the true facts of the matter of the coroner's investigation automatically makes you an accomplice. Oh, I see. But why are we talking like this, darling? We'll both feel better after we've had a little rest. (laughs) Of course we will, dear. Kiss me goodnight, darling. I'm going home. I'll take you. Oh, no. No, I'd rather go alone tonight, if you don't mind. As you wish, my dear. Good night. Good night, darling. Sweet. Uh, Will you call me in the morning? Yes, of course I will. 
Good night, Ken. Good night, darling. Pleasant dreams. That's strange. Very strange. Just a moment ago, there were only Sylvia and I here. Now she's gone. And yet I feel that I'm not alone. You're not alone, Grange. What? What was that? I thought I heard a voice. It was my voice. Who, who are you? Where are you? I told you I'd come back. No. No, it's just my imagination. Is it your imagination, Grange? Yes. Yes, of course. I warned you. I warned you. Remember? Come out. Come out in the open. Come out, I say. Do you hear me? Come out. Your gun is useless against me now, Grange. What do you want? Tell me, what do you want? Oh, not now. The time isn't right now. But I'll be back. Watch for me and wait. Watch and wait. For I'll come back, Grain. I'll come back. No. No, I'm sure of it. It was no one. No one at all. I just imagined it, that's all. Yes, yeah, just my imagination. Sylvia, dear, you look so tired. Here, perhaps this will wake you up. Present for you. A present? Yes, something I picked up today. I thought you'd like it. How sweet of you, darling. Uh, I think I can guess just by looking at the box. It's, um, it's a ring. Oh, aren't you clever? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, open it. All right, darling, but don't hurry me. Oh. Hey, Sylvia, that isn't the ring I bought for you. Keith, look at this ring. The initials. P.B. Keith, this, this is his ring. Sylvia, what are you saying? It's his ring. I gave it to him. But and Sylvia... Keith, I swear to you, Philip Blake was buried with that ring on his finger. Mind coming around to the other side, please, mister. That door's busted and you can't get it open. Oh, very well. Sorry to ask that of you, but they ain't had time to get the other door fixed. Where to, friend? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Huntington Arms Hotel, please. Right. Excellent. Huh? That's where I'm going. Oh. Well, you startled me. I didn't know there was anyone in this cab. It's so dark tonight. Yes, isn't it? I see. I don't seem to feel anyone in the seat here beside me. Strange. You certainly bumped me hard enough when you crawled in here. Bumped you? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir, but I... Never mind, Grange. Never mind. You know me? I'm surprised that you don't know me. Why, yes. Your voice sounds familiar. Good Lord. Philip Blake. Do you mind riding with me? I... Blake. You're supposed to be dead. You're supposed to be buried. I am dead, Grange. I am buried. Tabby! Tabby, stop this tab! Right, sir. Now, let me out of here. Let me out. What's the matter, Governor? Hey, you had not to jump out of a moving car like that. What in the name of heaven is in the back of that cab? Well, why, it's nothing, Governor. Here, see? I'll turn on the light. There. See? But there was somebody in there with me. Oh, now, mister, they couldn't have been. Look for yourself. The seat's empty there. And you just jumped out on this side of the cab. The other door won't open. <laughs> it 
No, brother, there wasn't nobody in that seat with you. Must have been your imagination. This is Sylvia. I just wanted to remind you about the masquerade ball at Keith's new home tonight. You'll be there? Fine. Now remember, masks and costumes for everybody. All right, dear. Bye. Now be sure to come in costume, won't you, Dorothy? Yes. And heavily masked, my dear. Yes, at Keith's new place. Oh, darling, wait till you see the place. It's really a mansion. <laughs> Honestly, it's huge. Mr. Grange, I believe. Sylvia, darling. <laughs> so you've penetrated my disguise. Silly. I heard you order it from the costumers yesterday. <laughs> Darling, the music will start soon. Is the first dance ours? Sylvia, my dear, every dance is ours tonight. <laughs> Are you happy I bought this place? Oh, it's lovely. Absolutely lovely, Keith. Darling, what's the matter? That man in black. I've been watching him all evening. He's been watching me. Do you know who he is? No. He just stands and stares at me. Everywhere I go, he's always just a short distance away. Look, Keith. He's going into your study. Well, he hasn't any business in there. That's strange. I locked that door this evening so the guest wouldn't go into your study and disturb things. Well, he just walked right in. And, dear, I'll go see who he is and what he wants. You mingle with the guests and I'll join you later. Very well, dear. But don't be long. I'll be waiting for you. All right, Sylvia. Yeah. It's odd. This door is locked. Yeah. Dark. The piano. Oh, confound it. Where's the light switch? There. No. No, it can't be. That piano. Someone's playing, and yet there's no one seated there. The keys moving up and down, playing the music, but there are no hands on them. That melody, it's the melody he played the night I killed him. He's playing it now, and yet he's not there. I'm here, Grange. I'm here. Blake. Look closer, Grange. Here I am. You see? Yes. I see you now. I brought you a little gift for your masquerade party. What? You'll find it lying on your desk. Turn around and see for yourself. That's right. There. You see? A, a gun. It's the one you killed me with. Don't you recognize it? Where did you get that gun? I found it, Grange. And I've brought it back to you. I put one shell in its chamber. Just one, Grange. But that is enough. What are you trying to... Gone. He's gone. Lord, am I mad? Was I dreaming? No. No, the gun is here. It is my gun. One cartridge, he said. Only one. One cartridge. Yes. Yes, it's the only way left. He knew it was the only way. 
Now he's left me to take it. All right, Blake. You can have your revenge. You can have it. And you are right. It is the only way. Hmm. So he shot himself, eh? The evidence in there will indicate that he did, yes. Say, that's quite a yarn you spun, Zorro. It is nothing but the truth. Come on now, come on, my friend. Let's take off your mask and have a look at you. One moment. Keith Grange shot Philip Blake squarely between the eyes. Yeah? So what? That doesn't make. A very pretty sight. Well, I don't see what that's got to do with... Uh, here comes the captain. He'll take that mask off you. Captain Sullivan, come here a minute, will you? Yes, Casey, what is it? Well, there's a mug here that won't take off his mask. He's been spinning me the most fantastic yarn I ever heard in all my... Uh, 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 where'd he go? Huh? Where'd who go? Say, did you let somebody get out of this house, Casey? Uh, no, 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 Sir Cap. No, I didn't. But he was he was standing here just a minute ago. He wouldn't take off his mask. He told me the darndest story about a murdered man coming back from the grave. Casey, <laughs> have you been near the punch bowl? Well, there's no one here now. Wait a minute. What's this stain here on the floor? Blood. A little pool of it. There on the floor. Right in the exact spot where the man in black was standing. Came Back, an original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop. Ben Morris was Keith Grange. Eleanor Naylor Corrin was Herda Sylvia. Fred Wayne took the part of Casey. Muir Height was Captain Sullivan. Murillo Schofield, the cab driver. And Eugene Francis was the man who came back. Ladies and gentlemen, every Friday night at this time, the National Broadcasting Company will bring you dark fantasy, tales of the weird, adventures of the supernatural, Created for you by Scott Bishop. Listen one week from tonight for the breathtaking story of the tombs of ancient China, the soul of Shanghai Wan. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>